I Want to Be Somebody New by Robert Lopshire. Once I wanted to be in the zoo, and that was the day I first met you. You said that the zoo was not for me. The circus, you said, was where I should be. And so the circus is where I went. I did my tricks with spots on a tent. I put my spots way up in the air. I put my spots just everywhere. My tricks with spots were lots of fun, but no more spot tricks. I am done. Now I want to be somebody new. So here's a new trick I'll show to you. Ready? Get set now. One, two, three. Now look and tell me what you see. An elephant is what we see. Why you are as big as big can be. But being that big cannot be fun. Say, you must weigh at least a ton. You cannot walk up on this fence or squeeze between these circus tents. The door of your house is now too small. You can't get through that door at all. You can't go here, you can't go there, you can't go much of anywhere. You cannot sit in your old chair. Your new rear end won't fit in there. You're very big, you're very fat. We do not care for you like that. Every word of what you say is true. Okay, so I'll be someone new. Ready? Get set now. One, two, three. Now look and tell me what you see. A tall giraffe is what we see. You are as tall as tall can be. But being that tall can't be any fun. You're taller now than everyone. Your head is now so high in the air. It's hard to see your face up there. And we can see from way down here a bird is flying in your ear. We do not like to see you tall. We do not like you tall at all. Every word of what you say is true. Okay, so I'll be someone new. Ready? Get set now. One, two, three. Now look and tell me what you see. A mouse. A mouse. That's what we see. You are as small as small can be. Well, what do you think? I'm asking you, do I look good this way to you? We did not like you, fat or tall, and now you're very much too small. Your chair is now too big for you, and now your door is too big too. You cannot open up your door, and that's not all. There's much, much more. A mouse cannot go out and play. A mouse must hide inside all day. And a mouse must never make a sound because that's what brings the cats around. There are traps put out to catch a mouse 
because no one wants one in their house. We did not like you fat or tall, and now you know what's wrong with small. Okay, 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 you two. I'll make myself be someone new. Ready? Get set now. One, two, three. Now look and tell me what you see. Oh no, you don't. You stop right there. We like you and we really care. We liked you best a whole, whole lot when you were just our old friend Spot. So do your trick with your one, two, three, but show us what we want to see. Say, you are right, as right can be. And it does feel best to be just me. Sam and the Firefly, written and illustrated by P.D. Eastman. The moon was up when Sam came out. Now is the time for fun, he said. Who, said Sam, who, who wants to play? But no one said a thing. Then Sam looked about. The fox was asleep, and the jay was asleep. The dog was asleep, and the hog was asleep. The sheep was asleep, and so was the cow. Then Sam went down to the lake, but no one was there. All he could see was the moon and the shine of the moon on the water. It takes two to have fun. Who, said Sam, who, who wants to play? But no one said a thing. Then Sam saw a light. He saw the light hop. He saw the light jump. It went here, it went there, it went on, it went off, but no one said a thing. Then the light hit Sam on top of his head. The light said, Boo! Who made that boo? asked Sam. Who are you? I am a firefly. My name is Gus. And I have a trick I can do with my light. Look, look. I can put it on and keep it on, like this. Then Sam saw something new. The firefly made lines with his light. Say, said Sam, what a trick. This is new. Oh, the things we can do with a trick like that. Let me show you. Now put on your light and keep it on. Then you do what I do, he said to Gus. Then Sam went up, and Gus went after him. When Sam went down, down went the firefly too. Where Sam went, Gus went. Then Sam stopped, and Gus stopped too. Now just look there said Sam. See what we did. Why, we made words, big words, said Gus the Firefly. Say, I like this game. I want to do it again. This word trick is fun. Come on, make more words. So away the two went. Gus after Sam. They made lots of new words. They made fish. They made wish. They made house and a mouse, then fox, dog, cat, yes, no, kangaroo, and thermometer. Sam and Gus made a lot more words. Then Sam looked about. He was all alone. Where was Gus? Then Sam looked down. He saw some cars. And there was the firefly, down by the cars. Come back here, called Sam. What are you up to? What was Gus up to? Gus made some words. Gus made go fast and slow. 
he made go right and go left. And did those cars go? They went bash. They went smash. Gus did words. That made the cars crash. Oh, what a mess those cars were in. Dear me, said Sam. This will not do. He should not do this. Gus did a bad trick with those words. Now see here, Gus. But Gus would not see. He would not hear. Yow, wow. I like to make words, lots of words, he said. I like this game. Let me be, you old goose. You, and away he went. Stop, Gus, stop. Come back, called Sam. That was a bad trick. Come back here now. Bad tricks are not fun. Oh, go on home, said the firefly. You old goose, you old hen, what do you know about fun? Goodbye. And away Gus went. Now Gus did more tricks. He did word tricks on some airplanes. He made them go up. He made them go down. He made them go this way. He made them go that way. Now, what a mess the airplanes were in. No, Gus, no, said Sam. But Gus did not want to stop. Not yet. This was fun. Then Sam saw Gus do another bad trick. It made the firefly laugh and laugh. It was funny to see them going free to the movie show. Stop your tricks, called Sam. No more words. Stop, Gus, stop. Now stop. But Gus the Firefly did not stop. I have one more trick, he said. A little trick. Look, Sam, look. A one word trick. Then Gus did his little trick, his one word trick. He did a bad trick. He did it to the hot dog man. He made the word cold near the top of the stand. The men looked up. They saw what Gus did. We want our hot dogs hot, not cold. Goodbye, they said. Gus did not see the hot dog man, the man with the net and the jar. Look out, called Sam. Look out, Gus. The hot dog man is mad. I will get that firefly, said the hot dog man. I will take him away from here. He will not play another trick on me. Then something hit Gus. He was in a net. Then, Gus the Firefly was in a jar. Let me out! Gus hit at the walls of the jar. He hopped about. He jumped up and down, but it did no good. There was no way to get out. Then Gus in the jar was in a car. The car went away fast. Where would it take him? Would he do more tricks? Would he make more words? Would he have fun again with his light? Would Gus get out of the jar? Gus did not know it, but Sam was there too. He was nearby, in back of the car. Oh, what can I do? said Sam. I have to get Gus out of that jar. But how? How can I get him out? Sam was sad. And Gus was sad too. I should have stopped when Sam said no. I was bad. I just had to have fun, said Gus. I wish Sam were here to get me out. The car went on. Then it stopped with a bump. It stopped on some tracks. 
The car would not go. The hot dog man got out. Then he looked down the tracks. What did he see? He saw a train. Sam saw it too. What would he do? There was just one way to stop that train. Sam went to the car. He took the jar, the jar with Gus. Then he let the jar fall. Crash! And Gus was out. You can save the car, Gus. You can stop the train. You know what to do. Do it, said Sam. And the firefly did it. He made the word stop. He did it fast, and he did it big. He did it a lot. He made lots of big stops. Yow, wow, Gus, called Sam. At last, you did a good trick. Look, it says stop. Look down there, a car on the track. Stop the train. The train did stop, and just in time. What a trick, they all said. A good, good trick. Hooray for the firefly. He stopped the train. But Sam and Gus did not hear. They had gone away. Sam looked at Gus as the sun came up. Now the morning light is here, and no one can see your tricks. It is time we went home to bed, said Sam. So Sam went back to his home in the tree, and Gus went back to the lake. But night after night, when the moon comes up, Gus the Firefly comes back to play. Stop That Ball by Mike McClintock Illustrated by Fritz Siebel I hit my ball. I made it fly. I hit my ball as it went by. It went around and then came back. I gave my ball another whack. I hit it high. I hit it low. I hit so hard the string let go. The string let go. There went my ball. Away up high. Out past the wall. So I ran fast around the wall. I had to get my big red ball. I saw it jump. I saw it roll. And head right for an open hole. The hole was deep. The hole was black. How could I get my red ball back? What could I do? Say, this was bad. This was the only ball I had. And then a man put out his head. You hit me with your ball, he said. He was so mad, he sent my ball way down the hill. I saw it fall. I saw my red ball take a hop. And you know where I saw it stop? I saw it hop right on a truck. Oh, what a shame. Oh, what bad luck. The truck went down the hill and so I ran as fast as I could go. Look here, I called. I called out, say, you must not take my ball away. At last, the truck came to a stop, and my red ball was up on top. I saw the truck back up to dump. The sand came out. I had to jump. The sand came out. So did my ball. I saw it jump and bump a wall. I saw it jump right in a box. I saw it land up on some blocks. And there it sat. I said, I bet that ball will not be hard to get. 
Uh-oh. Now here was something new. The box went up. My ball went too. It went up high. What should I do? I just could not sit here and whine. I had to get that ball of mine. Here's your ball, called out a man. Now run and get it if you can. And then he gave my ball a kick. Oh, what a trick. Oh, what a trick. Now, could I get it? I could try. My dog ran fast, and so did I. But not a thing went right that day. That dog of mine got in my way. Then down I went, and so did he. My ball went on ahead of me. My big red ball went on its way. Would things go on like this all day? A man said, Stop! Stop! Keep away! Do not go near that hill, I say. We are about to blow it up. So stop right here and hold your pup. There was my ball. My only ball. I could not get it after all. Then boom, boom, boom. Oh, what a thump. I saw the hill just kind of jump. And then it shot up in the air. And bits of it went here and there. Where was my ball? Where did it go? I could not see it, high or low. Then, there it was, high as a kite. Now I could get my ball all right. I said, I know it must come down, and when it will fall somewhere in town. Then I can find it, yes I can. And so I ran, and ran, and ran. I saw a house on fire ahead. My ball must not land there, I said. For if it does, it's gone forever, and I will never get it, never. But then some water shot up high. It hit my ball and made it fly. Boy, was I happy. This was fine. Now I could get that ball of mine. It got away from me somehow. My ball was in a ball game now. It hit the man who sold the pop. It went right on. It would not stop. It went right for the man at bat. I called, oh no, do not hit that. Then whack, he hit a long home run with my red ball, my only one. Here came my ball. It hit a tree, and pow! It just about hit me. Then on it went. How could this be? Could this go on all day and night? It could, you know, and it just might. This might go on all night and day. I saw it go another way. Now who could say where it might land? I saw it head right for a band. I saw a fat man in the band. He had a fat horn in his hand. Oh, what a thing to get into. If it went there, what could I do? Oh, what bad luck. My ball was stuck. And so the fat man could not play, for my red ball was in the way. I saw him blow with all his might. Oh, could he blow it out all right? Oh, what a blow. My ball shot out, and it was gone, or just about. I saw my ball head for a gun, and then, oh boy, how I did run. My ball came down just like a shot. What did it do? Why, you know what? 
I got up on that gun so fast. Now I might get my ball at last. I put my head down into sea, but then a man took hold of me. He took me down. Get back, he said. That gun could blow away your head. Then boom, boom, boom. Oh, what a thump. I saw the gun just kind of jump. It shot my ball up in the air. How high would it go now? And where? My ball went up high past the band, the tree, the game, the fire, the sand, the box, the blocks, then past the man down in the hole. I ran and ran. My ball went over all the town. And do you know where it came down? My ball was home. I ran so fast. Now I could have my ball at last. And I could put it on the string. I was so happy I could sing. But by the time I got home too, someone, I do not know just who, had put my ball back on the string. That was a kind of funny thing. But I was happy anyway. I had my ball and I could play. I hit my ball. I made it fly. I hit my ball as it came by. It went around and then came back. I gave my ball another whack. I hit it high. I hit it low. I saw the string let go. And then my ball was on its way again. Could this go on all day and night? It could, you know, and it just might. Robert the Rose Horse by Joan Heilbroner Illustrated by P.D. Eastman Robert was a happy little horse. He lived on a farm. He lived with his mother and father. One day, Robert had a party. It was his birthday. All his farm friends came to the party. They had a big cake. Happy birthday, Robert, said all of his friends. Happy birthday to you. The cake was very pretty. It had big red roses all around it. Robert liked those red roses. He put his nose right into one. He took a big sniff. Then Robert got a funny feeling. His eyes began to itch. His nose began to itch. And then... Kerchoo! Robert sneezed. What a sneeze! Up went his farm friends. Up went the cake. Up went the roses. And Robert fell down flat. His mother called the doctor. The doctor looked at Robert. Say, ah, said the doctor. Ah, said Robert. Aha, said the doctor. I know what made him sneeze. I know I am right, said the doctor. You will see. Here, Robert, take a little sniff. Robert put his nose into those roses. He took a little sniff. Again, his nose began to itch. Again, his eyes began to itch. ker went Robert. Bang! went the window. Bang! went the door. Up went the roses. And the doctor fell down flat. I was right! said the doctor. Roses are very bad for you. There are too many roses on this farm. You must get away from them. You must go to the city. So Robert had to go. 
Goodbye, he said to his mother and father. I will be all right in the city. I will find work. I will find a job. Robert did find a job in the city. He went to work for a milkman. He took the milkman and his wagon all around the city. It was a good job, and Robert was happy. Robert liked this kind of job. Then one day, a man walked right next to Robert. The man had a flower in his coat. The flower in his coat was a rose. A rose! And right under his nose! Robert got that funny feeling again. His nose began to itch and his eyes began to itch, and... ka went Robert. Crash went the wagon. Splash went the milk. Up went the milkman, and the man with the rose fell down flat. Go away, the milkman told Robert. You cannot work for me anymore. So Robert began to look for work again. But it was hard for a horse to find a job. He looked for many days. One day he saw some horses. They had people on them. Say, I could do work like that, said Robert. I will ask for a job. Robert went to the door. A man came out. You look like a good horse, the man told Robert. You can work for me, but you will have to work hard. You will have to do everything you are told. So Robert went to work. He did just as he was told. When he was told to go slow, he went slow. When he was told to go fast, he went fast. Robert did everything he was told. I like this work, Robert said and I'm going to keep this job. Then one day, he took a woman for a ride. Everything was going well, but all at once, look, the woman said, look at those pretty roses. I want those roses. Robert, take me over there at once. What could Robert do? He had to do as he was told. He took the woman to the roses. Again, he got that funny feeling. His nose began to itch. His eyes began to itch. And... ka went Robert. Away went the wagon. Away went the flowers. Up went the woman. And the flower man fell down flat. Once more, Robert was out of a job. Robert had to look for work again. He looked and looked. Fathers had work. Mothers had work. Everyone had some kind of work. But there were not many jobs for a horse. Robert walked and walked. He looked and looked. Then at last, Robert saw something. He saw a job he could do. He could be a police horse. I will go in. I will ask for the job, he said. When Robert came out, he was a police horse. He was a good police horse. He did all kinds of police work. One day, Robert worked on Bank Street. Some men came down the street. Three men. One of them had a black bag. They went into the bank. Robert did not see them. Then all at once, someone called out, Help! Police! Help! Robert looked around. He saw the three men. They were robbers. Bank robbers. The robbers ran right at Robert. They ran right over him. 
and away they went. Robert got up fast. He had to stop those robbers. But how? How could he do it? And then Robert saw a rose. It was not a big rose, but it was a rose. Robert began to think. He began to think fast. Robert went over to that rose. He put his nose right in that rose. He took a sniff, a big, big sniff, and he began to get that old funny feeling. His eyes began to itch. His nose began to itch. Then, Robert sneezed. Never was there a sneeze like it. Away went cats, away went hats, up went dogs, down came birds, bang went the guns, up went the black bag, and the robbers fell down flat. Hooray! Hooray for Robert! Everyone yelled. The bank man was happy, the policemen were happy, everyone was happy. Robert had stopped the robbers. He had sneezed the robbers flat. The next day there was a party. It was for Robert. His mother and father came. His farm friends came. The doctor came. All the policemen came too. Then one of them got up. Robert, he said, I have something for you. Roses! yelled the doctor. Hold on to your hats! Here comes a sneeze! Robert will sneeze us all to Chicago! Robert took a little sniff. His nose did not itch. His eyes did not itch. Then Robert took a big, big sniff. He did not get that funny feeling. That big kerchew had done it. Robert, at last, was all sneezed out. And roses never made Robert sneeze again. The End The Diggingest Dog by Al Perkins Illustrated by Eric Gurney I was the saddest dog you could ever see. Sad because no one wanted me. The pet shop window was my jail. The sign behind me said, for sale. I was tied to a bare, hard floor of stone. I could not even dig for a bone. I was living all of my life alone. A dog that no one wanted to own. And then one day, at half past four, Sammy Brown came in the door. Sam took one look at me and cried, Why are you tied up here inside? I've always wanted a dog like you, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll take you out to the farm with me. You'll play outdoors where you should be. I felt as happy as a pup when Sam paid the man and picked me up. He rubbed my ears he scratched my head. I think I'll call you Duke, he said. Sam gave me a collar. He gave me a lead. We left the shop at tremendous speed. We went a long way out of town. We came to the farm of Sammy Brown. It was the nicest place I'd ever seen. A pretty white house in a field of green. And in the shade of the apple tree, a special doghouse just for me. Next morning, while Sam did his chores, he let me run and play outdoors. I'd never played outdoors before. I'd always lived on that hard floor. I'd never run on nice soft ground. Now I barked with joy as I ran around.
Sam looked at me and scratched his head. Duke, you need some friends, he said. He blew his whistle. He blew a blast. And many dogs came running fast. I'd never met a dog before. Now I was meeting six or more. They walked around and looked at me. They looked me over carefully. Then, at last, I heard them say, He's one of us. He'll be okay. One dog, who wasn't very big, suddenly began to dig. The others started digging too, but that was something I could not do. I'd never learned to dig in that store. How could I on that hard stone floor? I tried to dig, but alas, I couldn't. I wiggled my paws. My paws just wouldn't. I fell on my ear. I fell on my face. I fell on myself all over the place. The others said, Duke may be big, but he's no good. He cannot dig. They stuck their noses in the air. They walked away. They left me there. I'll teach you, Duke, cried Sammy Brown. I'll show you how to dig deep down. He crouched beside me with his hand. He dug a hole in a pile of sand. I tried it too, but still I couldn't. I wiggled my paws. My paws just wouldn't. I'd never learned to dig in that store. How could I on that hard stone floor? Sammy sighed. I almost cried. My eyes and nose were full of dirt. My paws and claws and elbows hurt. I had a pain across my back. I knew I'd never get the knack. Sam felt sad, and I felt bad. If only I could make him glad. We both knew I'd never get it right. Sam and I couldn't sleep that night. So when the sun rose in the sky, I thought I'd give it one more try. I wiggled one paw. I saw it could. I wiggled the other. I saw it would. I could dig with my paws. I could dig with my claws. I felt no pain across my back. I knew at last I had the knack. Sammy Brown looked out at me. He saw me digging happily. Good for you, Duke, Sammy cried. I knew you'd do it if you tried. So I dug farther. I dug faster. I dug and dug to please my master. I dug up grass. I dug up weeds. I dug up daisies. I dug up seeds. I dug up the fence. I dug up the gates. I dug up the garden of Mrs. Thwaites. I dug up the rooster. I dug up the hens. I dug up the sheep and pigs in their pens. I dug and dug. I couldn't stop. I dug up the barber in his shop. I dug up Mr. Rodney Thayer sitting in the barber's chair. I dug my way right through the town. I dug a lot of buildings down. I was having so much fun, I dug up Highway 81. I came to a hill. I dug to the top. But all of the sudden, I had to stop. Right in front of me, looking down, there stood my master, Sammy Brown. Sam didn't smile or pat my head. He only glared at me and said, I'm sending you back to that animal store. They'll tie you to that hard stone floor 
and you'll never, never dig anymore. I couldn't run. I couldn't hide. Dogs came at me from every side. And then suddenly I knew there was just one thing for me to do. I ran away from Sammy Brown. I dug a hole that went straight down. I left him standing up on top. I dug and dug. I didn't stop. How deep I dug, I could not tell. But soon I found I dug a well. Mud and water up to my chin. What a fix I now was in. I started to sink. I started to yelp. Help! I yelped. Help! 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 I could hear them way above my head. I could hear every word they said. One dog growled. He wrecked our town. This serves him right. Just let him drown. But Sam cried, Duke! You've been bad. You've made me sad instead of glad. But we're not going to let you die. We'll get you out. At least we'll try. Then at last I heard him shout, Maybe we can pull you out. Slowly, slowly, down they came. Each dog part of a log dog chain. I reached up, I touched a nose, I felt them lift me by my toes. Slowly, slowly, bit by bit, they dragged me up out of the pit. I thanked the dogs and Sammy Brown, and then I started back toward town. I knew I had to dig once more to fix things up as they were before. That's what I did. I dug back gates. I dug back the garden of Mrs. Thwaites. I dug back the roosters and the hens. I dug back all the pigs and their pens. I dug all day in the summer sun. I dug back Highway 81. I dug back everything in town, everything that I'd knocked down. Today, when I dig, well, I'm careful now. I'm useful too. Sam lets me plow. He'll never send me to that store or tie me up on a hard stone floor. My dog friends watch and wonder why they can't dig as well as I. The Very Bad Bunny Written by Marilyn Sadler and illustrated by Roger Bolin P.J. Funny Bunny did not mean to be bad, but sometimes he could not help it. One morning he spilled pancake syrup all over the kitchen floor. His sister called him a bad bunny. P.J. said he was sorry. He did not mean to spill the syrup. P.J. did not mean to tangle up his brother's yo-yo either. Or cut up the newspaper before his father read it. Or invite his friends to lunch without asking his mother. The funny bunnies could not believe it. They had never seen such a bad bunny. Then one day, PJ's little cousin, Binky, came to visit. So, be good bunnies and go out and play, said PJ's mother. 
So PJ and Binky ran out to play. But Binky was not a good bunny. He threw PJ's best ball into the lake. Then he tossed PJ's cowboy hat into a tree and broke PJ's baseball bat. He even let go of PJ's balloon. Binky never once said he was sorry. Be nice, Binky said PJ. Oh, I will not play with you anymore. But Binky did not listen. He used PJ's crayons without asking and left them in the sun. Then he took the wheels off PJ's bike. That does it, said PJ. I'm taking you back to the house. But Binky was just as bad in the house. First, he glued all of PJ's checkers together. <laughs> then he ate the last cookie in the cookie jar. He painted bunnies all over the living room wall. <gasps> he put his bubble gum on a chair and he locked everyone out of the house. The funny bunnies could not believe it. They had never seen such a bad bunny. Finally, it was time for Binky to go home. Everyone was so happy to say goodbye to him. Now that was a very bad bunny, said PJ. And all the funny bunnies had to agree. The end.